Thank you all for coming out this morning. Uh, my name is Ben Mavitt. I serve with the church on the finance committee. We're so grateful that you came out this morning on this uh, very cool, crisp morning. It was warm. Uh, so just a couple of announcements and then we can get started this morning. Uh, love to welcome, first of all, all of those who are joining at home as well. Uh, make sure that you're uh, also sharing with those at online. Make sure you share. I don't know a lot about social media, but I know you can share with other people. Please make sure you're sharing the broadcast with others. Uh, if you're new to our church, we have a welcome table back there. We'd love for you to stop by, pick up a, a little gift from us. We're just so happy you came out and joined us this morning. The CareNet Baby Bottle Campaign. We've got just a few of these left. Uh, what you're doing with those who take them home? I actually went on their website. It's a phenomenal organization. They're out there to help people um, with who are having pregnancies, unexpected pregnancies, uh, dealing with the stress and anxiety that goes with it. A very good organization. Um, please make sure you take some time to contribute. Loose change, checks, cash, whatever you want to put in them. They are due back on the last Sunday of July. We have just a few of those left. Children's ministry. Today marks the beginning of phase two. Everybody loves the word phases because we hear phases all the time right now. Today is phase two. So what's going to happen after uh, we're done with uh, our worship time? The kids will be dismissed and they'll be going off and doing their thing today. It's very exciting to see us getting some normalcy back for the kids. Amen. Also, uh, we have next week our July porch party. Please have your children bring a bathing suit and a towel. We're going to do it on the pavilion right after church, and it'll be 30 to 60 minutes next week. Calling all men. Free food. What's better than that? On uh, July 27th, that's a Monday night, we're going to be having a men's event. We are going to be doing it here most likely, planning it for one of the pavilions where we can have adequate social distancing. We're taking great lengths to make sure everybody can spread out, have their space, and watching all of the food safety needs uh, from that standpoint. But it's an opportunity where as men we can come together and reconnect, get back together, see friends, and just get back and encouraging each other in the Lord. Uh, please make sure you RSVP with Pastor Ray so he knows how much food we need to have. The food's on the church. Come eat. Come hungry. Anything else that's going on, you can always go to our website, VeroBibleFellowship.org. And with that, I'll turn it over to these gentlemen. Hello, testing. All right. Uh, good morning, church. Um, thank you for being here this morning. Uh, many of you uh, have probably um, found out about this already, either through our email or not. Um, but for those who don't, I'd like to give you an update on what's going on with Pastor Greg. Uh, and his family. So uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, Greg, along with Rini, his parents, and his daughter Morgan, all went to Alabama uh, to visit a nephew for his graduation. And while they were there, they were exposed to COVID-19. Uh, and, and they have now, uh, they all now have the virus, um, along with a few others. Uh, it, uh, Greg's oldest daughter, Morgan, uh, and her husband, now Morgan's husband, Greg's sister, uh, and her family, and Greg's brother, and his family. Uh, from the start, I want to be clear that since Greg and Rini have returned from this trip, they have not come to church um, or interacted with anyone in the body. Uh, they've been very intentional about quarantining themselves since they've returned. Um, the other thing I want to note is that uh, this is part of my family, and I and Andy have not been exposed to them since they've come back. Uh, we have um, not been in contact with them since they've returned from the trip. Um, all the family members that I mentioned uh, do have the virus, but uh, Greg in particular, along with his dad Walt and his brother Barry, um, have experienced the worst of the symptoms. Um, and so I want to give you an update. Earlier this week, uh, Greg was taken to the hospital on Wednesday. Uh, he was having difficulty breathing. Uh, and what they discovered is that he had uh, he has pneumonia uh, and, and an infection in his lungs, and he also has uh, AFib that he's been dealing with. Um, since he's been in the hospital, he's still there now. He has been doing better, um, but they are still working on getting his lungs back to full capacity. Uh, and so we need to keep continue praying for him. Uh, 
Uh, his dad and his brother also have pneumonia, um, uh, and, and so we're praying for them right now, too. Um, I know that I, along with the rest of the family, have so appreciated everyone's prayers right now in the church. It's been amazing to see everyone praying and gathering around Greg in this time. And, and Greg said this, actually. Uh, I wanted to read it, so I quoted it right. Um, and I believe it was in one of our emails, but he said, I just want VBF to know how special they are to me and to my family. It's the greatest fellowship I have ever participated in. And so we just so appreciate your prayers right now. And I just want to continue to ask your prayers as Greg continues to recover um, as he's in the hospital and continues to get back to full capacity. Uh, prayers for all the family members, um, and including his dad and his brother, uh, who, who also have been right now. Um, many of you have also asked about Andy, too. Uh, we, neither I or Andy were here last week um, at church. Uh, earlier last week, Andy was, uh, she had a surgery. And the surgery went very well. But later in the week, uh, she started experiencing migraines and along with uh, nausea. And uh, the symptoms grew very bad, and so we brought her into the hospital. Um, we think it was due to dehydration. And while they were treating that, they gave her a drug that uh, basically um, spiked her heart rate. And she, also, she already has a high heart rate naturally or, uh, because of, uh, she has sinus tachycardia. And so she, uh, it jumped her higher heart rate, and so we brought her back to the hospital the next day, and that's where we were over the weekend. They've given her um, the, the proper medicine now uh, that's lowered her heart rate, and she's recovered from those other symptoms as well, and is doing much better now. And so I just want to say thank you for your prayers for her um, and, and for the well. uh, She um, uh, is, is at home today, but is doing much better. And so... Uh, I just want to ask you, church, ask you for your prayers for our family, um, and ask you to continue to pray. And I thought, uh, along with this update in, the, in starting the service in this way, I'd like to pray together uh, as, as the body of Christ, um, and as uh, people who love our pastor and his family, um, I'd like to pray now together for them, um, and ask God for healing in their life. So if you do, just join me right now in praying for them. Dear Lord. We just so appreciate and love Pastor Greg and his family and how they minister to us and love us. And I get the joy of being a part of this family. God, and right now, um, we, we hurt when we see them suffering and sick uh, because they um, have gotten this virus. And so now, as you're gathered people together, even though I'm the only one speaking right now, we all lift up our prayers to you together, God, for Greg and for his family, for his dad, for his brother, and all the rest infected. And we ask, Lord, we plead with you for your healing touch in their life. We praise you for that, the, the fact that uh, he's had a good stay in the hospital so far. But God, we continue to pray, we continue to ask for your healing touch on him and the rest of the family. And God, we pray that you would comfort them, that you would give them the joy of your presence with them, that you would make it so real to them that you are there with them. You never leave us. You never forsake us. Often we just feel unaware of your presence. And so I pray that you would bring such a, a clear awareness of your presence with them, such a clear comfort, and such a clear love from our church and our family and our body uh, that are praying and lifting them up. God, I pray even this week as we continue to pray and as we continue to lift up prayers for Greg and the family, I just ask that you would answer those prayers. God, and I thank you that uh, uh, for those who are here this morning, God, when, when life uh, gives us difficult circumstances, it's often easy to get stuck on those circumstances. It's often easy to let our eyes sink and be fixed there and see nothing else. We have tunnel vision toward what's going on. And yet one of the beautiful things about gathering to get together as the body of Christ is that it's a weekly reminder to lift our eyes. It is a weekly reminder to turn our gaze on the character and nature of who you are, God. You are our hope. You are our sure and steady anchor in the gravest of storms. And so, God, we gather together now, whether in person or online, 
and we lift our eyes to you. We bring our worship to you. We hold fast to you because we know and we declare that you are holding fast to us and you are holding Greg and the rest of the family members in your hands now. God, we thank you for the opportunity to worship you together. I pray that you would stir our hearts to worship you now. As we sing and as we hear a message from your word, would you give us great hope and great assurance? And Lord, I just ask again that you would answer our prayers for healing for our pastor and his family. We pray this all in the beautiful, wonderful, strong name of Jesus. And all the church said, Amen. Amen.